Good evening YouTube. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create the background grid effect which is part of the predator effects which we've been working on in After Effects. So to get started here we're going to open up Adobe Photoshop and we'll go where uh, File, New, set the width and height to those or proportional to the original footage in case you want to reuse it. Click OK. In your new document we're going to go down to the uh, Polygon tool. Make sure the sides are set to 6. Hold down the Shift button on your keyboard and drag out our polygon. Make sure you get the angle right and then scale it appropriately. Okay, so drag your um, polygon to an ideal position around the edge where you have plenty of space to work with. And then we're going to go and hold the Alt Command and uh, T buttons on your keyboard and uh, then drag the um, shape to the position you wish. So get the spacing in between the two uh, polygons just right and um, once you're done click the check button hit shift alt command T to duplicate and you'll notice now that we've got a total of three objects with equal spacing between them and they're all on one shape layer so we can go hit alt and drag it down a copy of them and align the copy as well as we can possibly get it. Do your best to keep the spaces between them equal. If you need to, you can zoom in a little bit to make fine adjustments. Once you're happy with the result, you just zoom back out, drag out a separate pair, once again position it reasonably well, then grab your ruler and attempt to center it on the polygon as shown, bearing in mind that you're not operating on the center of a layer, so you won't be able to automatically snap it in place. Zoom in to get the position correct, and we'll move on to the next one. Drag out a separate ruler and attempt to center it on the opposite polygon. Again, you'll not be able to snap it, but you can zoom in to try and get the best results. Once you think it looks good, we can zoom back out, then grab a new ruler from the top, right click the top layer, select it and we can snap it to the middle of the layer. Then do the same for the bottom. Head up to the Marquee Selection tool and use it to highlight the enclosed area of the rulers. Then open the Edit menu and choose Define Pattern. Name your pattern Honeycomb Texture or whatever you wish. Click OK. Now we're going to open up a new document and unlock the background layer. Open Blending Options, check Pattern Overlay and change the overlay to our honeycomb texture. You'll find now that we can move it around to get the positioning right and scale it. If your pattern wasn't created precisely, you'll have lines down the image as you can see here. These lines weren't here when I recorded, so I'd guess it's just a video artifact of some kind. Anyway, uh, let's try and get the scaling right here so we can move on with the project. Somewhere around there appears to work quite nicely. Click OK. Now, ensure your background layer is selected, then click Edit. I'm going to choose Fill. Under Use, click Color and choose a black. Click OK and then OK. We've now filled in the background of our layer and solved a potential problem later. Copy the layer, duplicate it. Open up the pattern overlay of the top layer and set the pattern blend mode to screen. Click OK. Now open the pattern overlay of the other layer and reduce the scaling. We're now creating a kind of subset of pattern within the pattern. Scale it to around 5, perhaps going as low as 3. When you're satisfied the pattern looks presentable, we can move on. So click OK. Now we have the base completed for our effect. So we're going to go and select both layers, then right click and choose Merge Layers. Next we'll go into Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, and check Colorize. Set the color to a kind of a darkish red, and play with the saturation until you find settings you like. Once you're happy with it, click OK and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, set the radius to around 
0.3 or 0.4 without going too high or you'll lose detail. This is just to take the edge off the effect. And uh, now we have our effect completed. The next step in this project would be to add a spherized warp to the image. However, um, Photoshop has quite a bad history of this particular effect in that it only applies it to the center of the image. So we're going to wait until we get into After Effects later, at which point we'll apply the After Effects three-dimensional warp, and we can manage that in real time to give the image more of a depthy kind of feel. But before you bring it into After Effects, you may wish to add stuff like um, an interface, for example, progress bars, ammunition counters, and that kind of stuff. And it'll give your interface more of a kind of realistic feel to it. Um, so that's been a rather quick tutorial today as requested on how to create the background grid effect for the Predator project in After Effects. As always, I do hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please do consider subscribing as I'll be posting several more over the course of the next week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper.